Summary of Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut The story of Cat's Cradle is told backwards by John, who also goes by the name Jonah. John talks about how he once wanted to write a book about the day the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. He does this from the present day, which is right after the book's terrible finish. He wanted to write a story about what important people in America were doing at the time. He also tells the reader that he used to be a Christian, but now he is a Bocononist, which is a faith based on the small island of San Lorenzo in the Caribbean. John starts to tell his story from the past. In this, he tries to get in touch with Frank, Angela, and Newt Honecker, the children of Dr. Felix Honecker, so he can learn more about the scientist. In the book, Dr. Felix Honecker is one of the fathers of the atomic bomb. John writes a letter to Newt. Newt, the youngest of the brothers, doesn't remember much about that terrible day. He says that his father was smart but lacked emotional depth. He remembers how, on that day, his father tried to show him how to make a cat's cradle out of string but only made Newt angry. Newt gives John Angela's address and says that no one knows where Frank, the third child, is. John also finds out that Newt, a dwarf, dated Zinka, a woman who said she was a Ukrainian dancer, for a short time. Zinka has since left America with the help of the Russian government. About a year later, John gets a writing job in Ilium, New York, where the Honeckers used to live and where Dr. Honecker used to work at the General Forge and Foundry Company's research laboratory. John talks to people in the area who knew the Honeckers. Most of them describe the children as outsiders and Dr. Honecker as a smart but heartless scientist who only cares about science. Dr. Asa Breed, who used to be Dr. Honecker's boss, shows John around the lab. He says that the lab is one of the few places where scientists can do pure research. Dr. Breed is upset by John's questions because he thinks they show that scientists have no heart, no conscience, and don't care about the rest of humanity. During this talk, John finds out that the U.S. military once asked Dr. Honecker to find a way to get rid of mud. The expert came up with the idea for a substance called Ice-9, which is a seed crystal that can freeze a water molecule at room temperature and teach its neighbors to do the same. John figures out right that such a substance would be very dangerous and could cause all of the water in the world to freeze. John speaks up from the present to say that, despite what Dr. Breed said, Ice-9 does exist and that each of the Honecker children has a piece of it because they split up their fathers after he died on Christmas Eve. John gets a writing job that needs him to go to San Lorenzo. John finds out that Frank is a member of the government on the island by reading a magazine about it. John also sees a picture of the beautiful Mona Amans Manzano, who is Papa Manzano's adopted daughter. Papa Manzano is the country's old ruler. John reads about the complicated past of San Lorenzo, which has been ruled by many different countries even though it is mostly empty. John meets the new American ambassador to the country, Horlick Minton, and his wife, Claire, on the plane to San Lorenzo. He also meets H. Low Crosby, a bicycle maker who wants to open a plant on San Lorenzo, and Hazel, his patriotic wife. Angela and Newt are also on board, which is crazy. They are going to Frank's wedding, which John finds out is to Mona, as guests. The Mintons are reading a book about San Lorenzo. In it, John learns that Bocanon was born Lionel Boyd Johnson, went to the London School of Economics, and ended up on San Lorenzo through a series of random events, most of which involved ships sinking. He finds out that Bocanon and General McCabe, who left the U.S. Army, wanted to start a utopia on San Lorenzo. Bocanon created his faith, which is called after the way people in San Lorenzia say his real name, to bring comfort, meaning, and purpose to the people who lived there. He had McCabe make the religion illegal so that life would be more interesting. The plane lands, and a ceremony is set up for the new representative to arrive. During this, though, Papa Manzano gets sick, stopping the event quickly. John goes to his hotel with the Crosbys. Philip Castle, who wrote the book the Mintons were reading, owns the hotel. After Philip makes fun of them, the Crosbys don't stay there for long. 
John finds out that Philip grew up on the island and was taught by Bokanon along with Mona. Philip's father, Julian, runs the island's only hospital. At the hotel, John sees two people doing Bokomaru, a Bokanonist ritual in which they rub their feet together to mingle their souls. Frank calls John to his house right away. Frank isn't there yet when John gets there. Frank hangs out with Angela, Newt, and Julian Castle for a little while. Angela says that she thinks her father didn't get as much credit as he should have. Newt draws a bunch of black scribbles on a piece of paper and calls it a cat's cradle. Julian throws the picture into the waterfall below because he thinks it shows how pointless life is. Soldiers come to the house before Frank arrives to guard the next president. After that, the power goes out. Later, John reads about the Bokanonist origin story, which Bokanon himself calls Foma or a pack of lies. When the power comes back on in the middle of the night, John, Angela, and Newt all rush out of their rooms because the noise is so loud. John has his passport and wallet with him, and the Honaker kids have their vials of Ice-9, which John doesn't know about. When Frank finally gets there, he begs John to take over as president of San Lorenzo when Papa dies, which is about to happen. Frank doesn't think he's ready for the public part, but he tells Mona that it pays well and gives him the chance to marry her. This last fact makes John agree to run for president, even though he knows it would be silly to do so. He does Bokomaru with Mona, but almost loses her when he tries to tell her she can't have other loves. This goes against her way of life, she says, so John quickly becomes a Bokanonist. Frank and John go to Papa's house to ask for his approval of John's running for president. John plans to tell everyone about his part at the ceremony to honor the 100 martyrs to democracy. These were 100 young people from San Lorenzo who died on their way to help America after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Dr. Schlichter von Kienigswald is taking care of Papa. He was a Nazi doctor at Auschwitz and is now trying to save lives to make up for it. Papa makes John promise to catch Bokanon because science, not faith, is magic that works. Dr. Kienigswald doesn't understand why Papa keeps asking for ice. Papa gets rid of the poor Christian priest, Dr. Vox Humana, and tells Dr. Kienigswald to say the last rites for the Bokanonist, even though he just told John the opposite. Dr. Kienigswald and Papa play Bokomaru while Papa repeats what Dr. Kienigswald says about the Bokanonist creation story, which says that people are mud that got lucky and should be thankful to God for their short lives. John leaves to work on his speech. He thinks for a moment about giving Bokanon a place in his government, but then he realizes that the illegal religion is useful, it would be too hard to give the islands enough food, infrastructure, and other resources without it. He goes towards the ceremony near the rocks. John tries a piece of albatross meat from the spread. He gets sick right away and runs to find a toilet, where he runs into Dr. Kienigswald. The doctor is very worried, so he calls John over to look at Papa, who is frozen solid. He says that Papa froze when he touched something in his chain to his lip. Dr. Kienigswald tries to clean up, but in the process he gets ice nine on himself and dies right away. John talks to the Honaker children about ice nine. It turns out that each of them traded the technology for something they wanted, Frank for his place on San Lorenzo, Angela for her husband in the U.S military, and Newt, by mistake, for his affair with Zinka. They try to clean up by turning the Ice Nine back into water and putting Dr. Kienigswald's body in a cupboard. John and the Honickers go back to the celebration. They plan to burn the two bodies later. Minton then gives a speech about how pointless war is and asks everyone to think about peace instead of pride. Just after he throws a wreath into the water, one of the military planes flying above as part of the ritual catches fire and crashes into a cliff. The cliff face opens up into a big hole, and Minton and his wife fall into the water. Because of the damage to the land, Papa's house is no longer stable, and his body falls into the sea. When the Ice Nine touches water, it quickly freezes the sea and, most likely, all of the water on Earth. There are many storms in the sky. John and Mona find a place to hide and come out a few days later. 
They find a mass grave where most of the people on the island have killed themselves. A note tells them that they did this because Bokanon told them to. Mona thinks what they've done makes sense, so she takes some ice nine from the contaminated ground and puts it in her mouth. She then dies, too. John is found by Newt and his family, the Crosbys. John and the other people run to Frank's house for safety. Hazel sews an American flag, hoping that John will put it on the top of San Lorenzo Mountain. Frank is obsessed with an ant farm. Ants seem to be the only insects that have survived, and they do this by giving themselves to melt ice nine so that other ants can drink the water. John takes Newt for a drive one day so that Newt can forage for paint. He drives by Bokanon and pulls over to talk to him. Bokanon says he is trying to think of a way to end the Bokanonist texts. When asked what he has so far, Bokanon gives John a piece of paper and gives a shrug. This says, if I were younger, I would write a history of human stupidity. He goes on to say that he would take Ice-9 and make a statue of myself lying on my back, grinning horribly, and thumbing my nose at you-know-who. About the author. Kurt Vonnegut was the youngest of Kurt Vonnegut Sr. and Edith Vonnegut, née Lieber, Vonnegut's three children. Both of his parents came from rich German immigrant families, but they didn't teach him German language and culture because they felt like they should be more pro-American. Vonnegut went to Cornell University right after high school to study biology for two years. In January of 1942, he quit school and joined the U.S. Army, where he learned about mechanical engineering. Vonnegut's mother killed herself in 1944. Soon after that, Vonnegut was sent to Europe to fight in the Battle of the Bulge during World War II. He was taken by the Germans and put in a jail camp in Dresden. During the bombing by the Allies that destroyed Dresden, Vonnegut hid underground in a meat store. Then, he and the other prisoners were made to dig bodies out of the rubble. Vonnegut got out of Germany and came back to the United States in 1945. He soon married his high school sweetheart, Jane Marie Cox. They had three children while Vonnegut worked at different jobs to pay for his writing career. His first book came out in 1952. Cat's Cradle was his fourth book, and it came out in 1963. After his sister died of cancer in 1958, Vonnegut took in her three children. His best-known book, Slaughterhouse Five, came out in 1969. It is based on his own events in the war. Throughout the 1970s, Vonnegut kept getting good reviews for his books, but he also struggled with sadness. In 1997, his last book came out. Vonnegut died at the age of 84 because he fell and hit his head. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.